Supporting information for this video can be found in the video description. Old Grumpy Hunter here. In this video, we're going to visit all things kinetic energy. Well, maybe not all things. Most, if not all of you, are scratching your head right about now, because in a previous video, I declared that kinetic energy is overrated. I still stand on that statement, but I also agree that there's a place for it in archery. But you need to understand that the kinetic energy from an arrow will not do anywhere near the damage that the kinetic energy from a bullet will. 107 foot-pounds of kinetic energy from an arrow that's moving at 333 feet per second at impact is a long way from the kinetic energy produced by a bullet moving at 2,500 feet or faster that is needed to produce the hydraulic shock. I was recently on a hog hunt using a rifle and I ended up shooting the hog in the neck and it just fell over. During the cleaning and quartering process, I observed that everything under the skin of the neck was shredded. The damage was caused by the hydraulic shock of a bullet with a kinetic energy of 1,654 foot-pounds. If I had used my crossbow, the damage would not have been anywhere as severe and most likely the hog would have not fallen over. Kinetic energy is a form of energy that an object has because it is in motion. Note that kinetic energy is defined as an energy, not as a force. Energy is the capacity of doing work. Energy may exist in different types, including but not limited to potential and kinetic. When energy is in the process of transferring from one body to another, there is work. For example, from the bow to the arrow. If you want to accelerate an object, you must apply force. Applying force requires us to do work. After the work has been done, energy has been transferred to the object, and the object is now moving at a new constant speed. The energy transferred is known as kinetic energy, and it depends on mass and speed to be achieved. Kinetic energy depends on velocity of the object being squared. That means when the velocity of an object doubles, the kinetic energy quadruples. An arrow moving at 350 feet per second has four times the kinetic energy of an identical arrow moving at 175 feet per second. Kinetic energy is always zero or a positive number. While velocity can be either positive or negative, but when squared, velocity is always positive. Kinetic energy is not directional. That means the arrow shot parallel to the ground at 200 feet per second has the same kinetic energy as the arrow shot at 45 degrees towards the ground at 200 feet per second. Knowing the mass and the velocity of an object, the kinetic energy can be calculated using the formula k equals one-half times m times v squared. Knowing the kinetic energy and the mass of the object, the velocity be calculated. And of course, knowing the velocity and the kinetic energy, the mass can be calculated. For example, an elephant with a mass of 6,000 kilograms moving at 10 meters a second has what kinetic energy? Well, K equals one half times 6,000 times 10 squared. The kinetic energy is 300,000. So what is the velocity of a cannonball with the same kinetic energy with a mass of one kilogram? The velocity of the cannonball can be calculated two different ways. One, the velocity of the ball equals the square root of the quantity of the mass of the elephant times the elephant's velocity squared divided by the cannonball's mass. Or, V equals the square root of 6,000 times 10 squared divided by 1. The velocity is 775 meters per second rounded. 
the second way, the velocity of the ball equals the square root of the quantity of the kinetic energy divided by the mass of the ball times 2. So V equals 300,000 divided by 1 times 2, and again rounded, it comes to 775 meters per second. The problem as discussed in the video Math for Archery is that the formula 1 half mv squared is based on using metric units of kilograms and meters per second. The result is in joules. Now to use grains and feet per second, something needs to be converted. V equals mv squared divided by the factor, the resulting in foot pounds, where m equals grains and v equals feet per second. The factor also eliminates the need for multiplying by one half. I have found a minimum of four different values that are being used for the factor ranging from 450,000 to 40 to 450,880. In my videos I've been using 450,240 only because it appears the most common on the net. Two of the online listed calculators that I have tested appear to use 450,440, give or take, as their factor. According to deer and deer hunting, and I quote, the goal of kinetic energy is of course to achieve maximum arrow penetration, end quote. Now there are many of you who will dispute the statement by saying that as soon as the arrow slows, the kinetic energy decreases, which is true. Furthermore, when the arrow stops, kinetic energy does not exist. Now, in defense of deer and deer hunting, they did go on to say that there are many factors that affect arrow's penetration. Factors like the condition of the broadhead or hitting bone. New Archery Products states on their website, and again I quote, Proper arrow flight is as important as kinetic energy. Your arrow must be flying perfectly straight with no whipping or porpoising for max penetration." End quote. Different arrow weight and speed combinations can have the same or near the same kinetic energy. A 540 grain arrow with an initial speed of 220 feet per second will produce 58.05 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. An arrow weighing 390 grains that has an initial speed of 260 feet per second will produce 58.56 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. The faster the arrow flies, the more kinetic energy it will have regardless of its weight. For example, an arrow that weighs 435 grains is shot at 320 feet per second. It has a kinetic energy of 98.93 foot-pounds where the same arrow shot at 350 feet per second will have a kinetic energy of 118.35 foot-pounds. And if we go the other way, shooting at 290 feet per second, that arrow has a kinetic energy of 81.25 foot-pounds. Both arrow weight and drag affect kinetic energy. Like kinetic energy, when the arrow speed doubles, resistance in both air and tissue quadruples, and means as soon as the arrow has left the bow, the air resistance is slowing the arrow. When the arrow hits its target, there is a collision, and the arrow speed drops. For the sake of this part of this discussion, let's say your arrow weighs 435 grains and has an initial speed of 350 feet per second. Using the online arrow and crossbow ballistics calculator, it is calculated that the speed of 30 yards is 337.2 feet per second. Let's say that at impact, due to tissue resistance, the arrow speed drops in half or down to 163.6 feet per second. Furthermore, the speed will decrease even more as it goes through the target. Again, for discussion, let's say this exit speed is one half the speed of the arrow of impact is now exiting at 81.8 feet per second. There are many reasons for the arrow to slow inside the animal. At the time of firing, our arrow had a kinetic energy of 118.35. At the target, 30 yards away, just microseconds before the collision, the kinetic energy was 109.86. 
the collision reduced the kinetic energy by four times to 27.46. And as the arrow exited the animal, the kinetic energy was 6.87 foot-pounds. Please remember that the numbers we just talked about are for discussion purpose only and may or may not mimic real life. Furthermore, you have to remember that the kinetic energy we are discussing for the most part is point-blank kinetic energy. In everyday conditions, you are not shooting at targets located at point-blank range. So how do you know the kinetic energy of your arrow at any given distance? There are multiple calculators online that will give you that information, but it's fairly simple to calculate yourself. There is a rule of thumb that states for every 10 yards traveled by the arrow, subtract about 1.7 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. For example, if you're shooting at 20 yards, subtract 3.4 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. Let's look at the initial kinetic energy of 57 foot-pounds shooting at a target located 60 yards away. The kinetic energy of your arrow impacting the target will be 46.8 foot-pounds. 57 minus 10.2 equals 46.8. Do a Google search on how much kinetic energy is needed to kill a deer with a bow. You will get approximately 3,560,000 results and in those results you'll find tables that look like this. What these tables don't tell you is that that is the kinetic energy that is needed at the target, not when firing. Frequently it's asked, is more kinetic energy always better? In a word, no. Kinetic energy can be increased two ways. As I said before, increasing speed increases kinetic energy. If normally you shoot a 435 grain arrow at 320 feet per second and change bows so you're now shooting at 350 feet per second, the kinetic energy goes up 19.41 foot-pounds. But if you take that same arrow shooting at 320 feet per second and add 30 grains, the kinetic energy goes up 6.82 foot-pounds. When you double the arrow weight, the kinetic energy will double. However, the heavier arrow will fly slower, which in turn will succumb to gravity and friction. Well, what does this mean in real life? With the heavier arrow, it may be hard to hit the target, especially beyond 30 yards because the trajectory will not be as close to flat as the lighter arrow. You can compensate for this in your shooting. You have to remember that all the numbers calculated here are to be treated as guides and are not carved in stone. Most likely, the actual kinetic energy will be off a little bit because of factors. Factors as weather conditions, wind, air thickness, etc. The length and diameter of your arrow shaft. The length and weight of your arrow veins. Your shooting technique. Most of these variables should not cause too big of a difference in your kinetic energy. Thank you for watching this Old Grumpy Hunter presentation. Please give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to push the notification bell.